nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy Big John and G. The two gun fixer presents Legendary Gaming. Welcome back for another Monday. We do videos here every day of the week. Some of you know Wednesdays are my favorites because I get to do an unboxing on that day. But Mondays, I always like to stand here, sit here, be here, <laughs> and just wrap yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of a monologue, yeah. talk about things that are on yeah. my mind. Yeah. And once a month, what's on my mind are your comments. <laughs> so we're going to go through the comments. We're going to look at them. We're going to give them shout outs. We're going to answer questions. Uh, and just in general, go over and see what your thoughts are, because we really do appreciate that. Everything we do here, you know, we do sponsor-free. We are a non-monetized YouTube channel, so we can definitely use all the support and subscriptions that you're able to give us. So if you do support that kind of content, come on, hit that subscribe, and then join me down at the table while I look at your comments. Come on, I'll see you down there. All right, thank you for joining me here, and thank you everyone who's been sending in comments and watching the videos. Extra cool, and kudos points to all of you. Now, uh, just going down the list of the most recent comments, we get to start with, uh, with an old follower of ours, someone that's been watching our videos and commenting for quite a while, and that's Jen Washi. And Jen left a comment, for our, our recent Pixie playthrough, very recent, probably actually the most recent <laughs> Pixie playthrough before uh, you're watching this video today, uh, last Saturday's Pixie playthrough of, of uh, Let's Learn Spirit Island. Now, I usually do live playthroughs, uh, but Saturday I had a lot of plans. Uh, some things fell through, uh, some things didn't, but I knew beforehand I wasn't going to be able to do a live playthrough. So I've had the app a Spirit Island game sitting on my phone for months and I haven't even tried it. So I thought maybe that would be a good time to finally try it out. Try it out with all of you watching and seeing who else likes or dislikes it, depending on whether I like it or dislike it or not. Uh, and I did. I love the game. I, I really did. It was very good. In fact, I enjoyed the game so much, it's actually now literally on, on my gaming radar to, uh, to pick up because I would love to have the actual board game of this. And I know there's one or two expansions out for this too, I believe already. Uh, I'm not sure what else Greater Than Games, uh, that's who publishes it, right? Greater Than Games uh, is going to be doing with this, but it has my attention. So Jen, Jen uh, here, we have a message, a comment on the video saying, my personal favorite board game. And nice to see you're learning it. And she says with a with starry smile, laughing smile, and a, and a thumbs up. Which to me, I, I take it the fact that she is very happy to see that I'm learning it and finds it a little bit funny, although cool, the way I'm learning it through an app. That's the way I take it. Very cool, very positive, very nice. So thank you very much, Jen. And yes, I, I really did. I enjoyed the hell out of the game. I, I think that may have come through. Also, that was a little bit different of a style. Uh, in the past, when I've pre-recorded app games that I've played, it's just a voiceover with me. And I decided to go the reaction route for this. So I, I hope you uh, and everyone else that got a chance to watch it, I hope you enjoyed the difference b between that and just the voiceover that I did. I enjoyed making it. It was a little bit more time consuming that way, but it's fun enough that I would do it again if there's any interest in it. So let me know if you like the reaction style to that Pixie playthrough as well. So thank you very much, Jen, and uh, I, I hope you continue enjoying the show and finding something uh, that we have informational as, as well as uh, as well as fun. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Jen. 
Next, I see that we have a comment from another old friend of ours here on the channel, uh, the Shogunstein. And he gave, uh, actually we have two comments in a row by him I'm seeing here. And one is for our gaming radar from the other week, which we did on Renegade Game Studios title Proving Grounds, which is not only a solo game, but part of their solo series that they've that they've been developing and coming out with. I believe it was the first one in that series, actually. I've since gotten the game, since it's been on the radar, by the way. Uh, but Shogun Scene says, I see this game on sale quite a bit. Now, yes, of course, when you see a game on sale, that usually means that the sales weren't very good to begin with, and someone's just trying to get rid of this, make room on their shelves for something that's gonna sell more, sell better. With that being said, I haven't had a chance to play this game yet, though I actually have to contact Renegade Game Studios, and thank you for bringing this up and reminding me, uh, because there was a piece that was broken that I would like to get a replacement for, and it's a piece that holds the wheel uh, together, the, the clear plastic piece that holds the wheel and lets you spin it. Uh, I don't know how important it is in the game to be able to do it that way instead of just manually turn it and place it down. I mean, obviously it won't stay in place if the table jostles or something. Uh, but still, it's uh, it should be fixed, and if I'm going to show it off on camera, it, it 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 should be it should be whole. So hopefully they'll be able to send me a replacement part for that. Um, now the, another, the other game in their series, which was Warp's Edge, I really liked that game. It was a lot more uh, tactical and 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 strategic and strategery uh, needed involved in that game. Uh, it took me a little bit by surprise. Uh, not, not that I was thinking ill or bad or not thinking the game was going to cut it to begin with. Uh, I just didn't go in expecting that. So I'm not sure what to expect with Proving Grounds, but it'll be interesting when I finally get it uh, on table and on camera. Shogunstein, and we'll see whether whether we think, uh, me first hand, you second hand through experiencing the video, think it's a game that, that deserves to be picked up on sale or just walk by it. We'll find out. <laughs> now, Shogunstein also had another comment for uh, for an unboxing. He had two comments for the same unboxing, which we'll go over now. That was uh, What's in the Pixies Box by Lick Games. I think I'm pronouncing that right. L Y C K, Lick, Like, Licky, Likey. Lick Games, and uh, that, by the way, was a, a title called The Phantom the Card Game, which was based on the original Phantom comic strip. They, they got rights to the original stories and artwork, and they based the game on that. So the two comments that Shogun uh, Steen made uh, in the order that he, that he dropped it was first he said, was it Billy Zane in the movie? Yes, yes it was. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm a fan of, of Billy Zane, uh, there's been some movies uh, that I've enjoyed him in, and that is definitely one of them. That's probably the the, the, <laughs> the movie I've seen him in that I have enjoyed both the movie and his uh, acting and portrayal in probably the most. I'm not sure if it... I, I think he fit the character. Uh, what's the 21st Phantom's name again? Kit, Kit Harrington or something like that, I think? Wow, I'm drawing a... Am I drawing a blank or did I get that right? <laughs> but I'm, I'm not... I'm not so sure if he if he got the character right. I feel like he kind of did, but if that's going to be argued, I'm not going to have a lot of strong points against it because uh, I don't know the alter ego of the character that well. So he may have pulled it off and he may have botched it. I don't know, but I did enjoy the movie. And yes, Billy Zane, the Phantom, uh, came out around the same time as Alec Baldwin's The Shadow, another movie I really like. I think I liked it better than The Phantom. Two great what were they, 90s? 90s uh, action superhero movies based on, on classic comic strips, radio shows. I, I think they did a good job. Now, also on this game, uh, Shogun Scene said, I might late pledge this. I hope you did. Because uh, I'm, I'm guessing you saw my playthrough uh, at this point now, was that two weeks, two weekends ago? Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I, I think you even commented on it. Oh, it's all a blur. It's all a blur. Uh, yeah, I think you did. But it's really fun. I had a good time with it. Uh, there's going to be more material. I know, I can tell you this much right now. I know for a fact that they are working on expansions for this. And I, I say this 100% truth coming from the publisher uh, himself. 
Uh, hopefully this will come to fruition, but as of right now, it is being worked on, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll have more to report on it. Fingers, toes, and tails crossed, my friends. Now, Shogunstein is, is all over the place. Uh, for a Grand Central shout-out of Great Gamers, uh, part one, I want to do more of them. I decided that I want to do a series giving a shout out to YouTubers that I watch. And I do think that means a lot because I don't have a lot of time and don't watch a lot of YouTube channels because of that. I don't watch a lot of anything, even TV, Hulu. I don't have the time to watch a lot of things. And that's why I thought that it'd be nice to give shout outs to YouTubers that, that I enjoy, that mean something to me for a reason, that get me to give up some of my time to watch their videos. And Shogunstein was one of the channels that I mentioned in that. And one of the things that I, I talked about was I, I really wish he would he would do a little bit work on putting things in playlists. You know, he has some videos on, on Legos. He has a bunch of cool Lego videos, uh, and some like clothing videos, out in the woods videos, as well as the board game videos. And it would be, it would probably help his viewers like me, <laughs> if we wanted to find something specific to just go to that playlist. Uh, so I just needed to set that up for this because he said, you will have to help me set up a playlist. And uh, this was a week ago, a couple of days more than that already. So yes, yeah, Shogunstein, I do. I need to get in touch with you. I'll contact you. And it's very easy uh, once you go through the, the YouTube uh your homepage on YouTube, your dashboard. Uh, it's very easy. We'll go through it and... Uh, You'll be you'll be putting your videos in playlists in no time. <laughs> and he also wanted to thank me for giving him a shout out. Uh, he said, "I am tearing up right now. Thank you so much. You know, you don't have to thank me for this. It's nice. It's polite. It shows that you have manners. But you know as well as I do, brother. You don't got to thank me for this because I do enjoy the few channels I actually carve out time to watch." And if I'm making that time, someone else might be interested to know that it means that much and therefore check you out. So it's cool, brother. It's cool. I, uh, I hope I sent someone your way. If I sent just one person your way, I'm going to feel a lot better than I already do about giving you a shout out. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's uh, move down. We got some more videos. All right. Okay, so there was a Midday Monologue Monday, uh, a few Mondays, two, was it two? I think it might have been two weeks ago at this point right now, uh, where I was talking about miniatures versus standees in your board games. Whether you prefer miniatures, maybe you prefer standees, why, why I do, what the difference is, I think. Uh, and I, so I got into it with that. And we had a comment. Now, Spencer Palmer, I've seen you. I've seen you around here before. You left comments before. Thank you very much, Spencer, for continuing to watch and support our channel. That is so very cool of you. Woo! You've been at it for a while. So Spencer said, I like both. While miniatures are attractive, I like standees because they are probably cheaper to produce and can more easily be printed in color. For example, Star Wars... Uh, uh, for example, Star Wars Rebellion standees allow the faces of the commander units to be easily seen. This may not have been as impactful if they were miniatures, especially some of the standardized uh, Imperial commanders. I think standees are underrated nowadays. Great job on the video as always. I love your energy. I love your support. <laughs> Very cool. So, yes, um... You're absolutely right, and you know it. Uh, you don't have to, to address it like I think. You know as well as I do, Spencer, that yes, it is more expensive for them to print up the miniatures. And therefore, we don't see as many miniatures. And let's face it, we've seen companies that really drop the ball on miniatures and come out with some questionable, why did you even bother miniatures on your damn gaming table? We've seen that. I do enjoy the standees. I, uh, I'm a little bit of a stickler uh, in the sense that uh, I know this isn't always helpful. As you pointed out, uh, this kind of counters what you said, even though I agree with it about the Imperial Commanders uh, being able to see the faces on a game like that. Uh, a 20 sided Warrior and Buddy Ryman has this game, and I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to play it with him, so I know 100% what you're talking about. And this may defeat it a little bit, but with standees, I do. I like it when... Uh, 
the back of the standee looks like the back of the person. I do. When it looks, when they're both looking, you know, the same way in both directions, it just it, it bothers me. Uh, and also, uh, again, as as I know, I know I mentioned this in that video. Fundamental Games is die in the dungeon. Is a great example. I, I uh, the, the way the, the way the the beautifully painted and illustrated characters sit on that clear acrylic stand e base. Uh, it, it, I know some videos this could almost be a drinking game every time I say this word, but it's true. It pops right off of the board, right over the stand e, right into your eye. It smacks you in the face. You can't miss it, and it looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. It's, Miniatures are great. I love miniatures, but I'm not, a, as I say all the time, and it's true, I'm not a painter. If I painted miniatures, well, I probably wouldn't have time for anything else in my life. <laughs> but if, if I painted miniatures, I, I may be skewed towards them a little bit more. Uh, Pre-painted miniatures I like, as long as it looks like something more evolved than a bonobo attempted uh, to paint them. <laughs> I'm glad you liked the video. And yeah, I agree with you. Standees are completely underrated these days. You're 100% right. Now for a previous, previous, previous <laughs> Friday Night Fillers. Some of you who have been watching me regularly may remember I did a whole series on uh, Conan the Sumerian Tower of the Elephant, which is a Kickstarter game that I backed. And I was very happy with uh, by the end results when I got it and, and I played it. I think that showed in the videos quite clearly. So we had a, a comment, and this is from the first episode. Episode? The first, yeah, why not? The first episode of that Conan series on Friday Night Fillers at the Mall Tavern and the Garden Entrance. We have a comment from Table Salt Games who says, Minis for every character would have been great. Because this game is played level by level, it's pointless having walls. It makes the game cumbersome for no reason. I will both agree and disagree with you on that. And what I mean is, I'm not flip-flopping here, I'm not being indecisive here. What I mean is, I agree that it is very cumbersome about the walls. Let me start there. Uh, but I'm saying that from a filming point of view. Filming the game, that was not a fun option for me. I wish I, uh, I wish that in, in that sense that it didn't have the walls. I would have been able to, to get in a little tighter maybe with some of the shots, show it off a little bit better, a little clearer, uh, and I think it would have looked better for camera. However, taking the camera aspect out of this, I enjoy the walls. I really do. I personally don't find it to be cumbersome or in the way or anything. Maybe that's because you know, I'm, I'm an old school RPG or I, I cut my teeth on Dungeons and Dragons back in the back in the 70s, um, I'm, uh, late 70s, 1979, right? That, that still counts for the 70s. Uh, and I've played Dungeons and Dragons for so long using things like Dwarven Forge uh, tiles, uh, legendary terrain tiles that I, I'm, I'm used to seeing walls to the point where I'm expecting them now not so much in a regular board game because it usually isn't the case uh like it is with a conan game but with uh with, with rpgs uh, yeah i'm laying the tiles down for the dungeon i want to see those damn dungeon walls and i don't think that it becomes cumbersome but uh like i said i do agree with you on the other hand when, when it came to, to me filming those episodes i wasn't happy with having to film it the way i did uh because the walls were getting in the way that that wasn't good. So it's it's circumstantial with me, whether I enjoy it or not. Now, as far as the minis go, yeah, I would have liked to have seen miniatures for the lions and for the soldiers and uh, the, the, the thugs, whatever the hell they were called. <laughs> I would have enjoyed that too. Would have would have really upped the price of the game. And uh, at, at this point, the level of the game that I got. I, I mean, it wasn't super expensive, but I wouldn't, I don't think, I wouldn't have been so willing to part with money if they had to include the miniatures and raise the price. Um, also, I, I want to say that I kind of, although I love the game and I'm looking forward to, to something else coming out with this as an expansion, standalone or otherwise, 
I have to say I'm not very uh, happy with with the way they approached going through the Kickstarter. I'm not happy with the goals uh, that they had because uh, uh, a lot of the goals were either uh, digital downloads, like every second or third one was a digital download of a new adventure. Uh, they, they also had, um, for the Kickstarter uh, stretch goals, books for an R, uh, an R, a Conan RPG game, which isn't connected to this at all. It's not like the RPG version of this game. I don't count the game. I'm not playing. I, you know, I'm done pretty much. I mean, there's one or two things I'm looking at that I know are coming down the road that I'm looking at that I might get. But generally speaking, I'm done with RPGs. I have I have anything that I want to play RPG-wise. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I, I, with my Dungeons and Dragons. I got the basic. I got the, the advanced. I got advanced second edition. I got Dungeons and Dragons third edition, 3X uh, edition. Uh, I have uh, D20 with, I think, just about all of the, the D20 modern books that go along with that. I have, I have the old school TSR stuff. I got, I got Gamma World. I got Star Frontiers. I got some White Wolf games, uh, the, the uh, second edition and deluxe editions uh, of, of the World of Darkness stuff, particularly the Werewolf game stuff. I'm good. I'm good. I cannot think of an RPG style story or genre that I would want to run that I can't with what I have. I could run a Conan adventure. Boom. You want a Conan adventure? I could run one with what I got. So I don't need this. So those those things I wasn't happy about the way they ran it. Uh, and yeah, one of it was the miniatures. Uh, but overall, I think they could have done a better job. And I'm hoping that they maybe have learned a few lessons from running the Kickstarter and from what uh, the, a lot of the backers had to say with the way they ran it. Uh, they ran it okay, but they could have run it a lot better. So let's see. Let's see. Bonzi the Capabetta! You enjoyed our gaming music for Westerns, did you? So yes, I have a, I have a series that I've been slowly working on. Every few months is a new uh, gaming music that I drop um, from uh, just free music that you can, you can just run in the background of your campaign. I have fantasy music up, sci-fi music, and some Western music uh, up right now. And there'll be, I have a couple of other things that I'm thinking of. Uh, there'll be at least uh, at least one more for this year. There might be two. Let's see. Uh, but Fonzie, uh, for the gaming music westerns, he said, and I think this encapsulates everything there, Fonzie. yee <laughs> So if you're playing an, uh, an RPG like Boot Hill, I don't know how many of you remember Boot Hill, or maybe a board game like Western Legends, this music is going to be pretty cool to have in the background. Just run it. Go ahead. No charge. Or just do it. Play it. Have fun. It'll it'll help set the mood. <laughs> so thank you for enjoying that, Fonzie. Another, another regular viewer of ours. Little Will! <laughs> Little Will, regular viewer of ours. Hope everything is doing well. How's everything up there in Canada, my man? So uh, for our sliding, uh, sliding, for our slideshow gaming on Tiny Epic Pirates by Gamelin Games, Little Will said they do make pretty games. Yeah, they do. I'd say that. Every game uh, of those in their Tiny Epic series, and I have all of the games in the Tiny, well, I don't have the Ultra Tiny Western. I have the Ultra Tiny Galaxies. Was it Ultra Tiny Western, Ultra Tiny Defender or something? I don't, I don't got that one. I don't got that one. I got the rest of them. And yes, they are nice to look at. And isn't that the definition of pretty? Something that's nice to look at. <laughs> so thank you very much, Little Will. I'm so glad that we still entertain and inform you and that you're still here with us as one of our regular subscribers and viewers and friends. Very cool, brother. Hope everything is going well with you. Now, uh, again, going back to Shogunstein. Shogunstein is very prolific on this uh, YouTube channel, as you can see. So for Friday Night Fillers uh, of Sentinels of the Multiverse fighting Ambuscade, Shogun Scene said, I just picked up a gently used copy of the game. What is your best video or best video recommendation on how to play? That video. That video right there, Shogun Scene, uh, because that is the app. That is a playthrough from the app, and the app is a perfect 100% 
support of the Enhanced Edition, the second edition, which is the one you have. Um, this game taught me mistakes that I wasn't aware of, that I had played for, like, for, for, for a year or more thinking. Now, not making a mistake like you screw up a rule or you, you mistaken the rule for, for something else. You misremember the rule. No, I, I honestly thought I was doing things right. And I, uh, it's been a while. I think, uh, a lot of that had to do with, uh, dishing out damage, uh, especially as far as when uh, damage is boosted and how that is handled, and I've been doing that wrong. And the, the app, the app taught me how to play. <laughs> I mean, I was 80, 90 percent of the game I, I knew and I had correct, and I was doing right, regardless of whether I remembered a rule all the time, in time or not. I still was pretty damn good and pretty damn good with the rules of this game, and that taught me, no, John, you, you're not really. Now check this out. This is how you should be playing. It. So uh, that, or just get the app. The app is great. I, I love running the app on my phone. Uh, it's, when you get the app, it's just like the, the game that you got in the sense that you're buying the core box. If you enjoy that, you can buy an update expansion. That's one of the expansion boxes. Uh, so you can, you can build along and uh, learn what you really you know, like, and maybe you'd want to get it for the physical copy. Who knows? Or maybe having the app would be enough for you. I don't know, but the app and any video on the app is going to be perfect. Absolutely perfect way to learn this game. Um, what did you think? Oh, okay. Shogun Scene also had a question for a Pixie playthrough of uh, Tiny Epic Pirates by Game Win Games. What did you think of the game overall? All right, so this is, this is, this is true with my opinion, but this is not my uh, review or even my, my quick 20 sided uh, shot tabletop takeout kind of thing on this. Uh, overall, I had fun with the game. Now, this this is much like Tiny Epic Galaxies in the sense that the solo game is going to be playing different than a, a multiplayer game with other humans instead of in deck AI captain, so to speak, that you're fighting against. Uh, that is something I enjoy about it. So I haven't had a chance to play it multiplayer yet, so I can't compare the two styles as of yet. I think the game was worth it. I'm glad I backed it. I'm glad I have it in the Tiny Epic Collection. Uh, and it, it's, uh, I, I guess you could say it's one of my favorites. I wouldn't really know where it's placed right now. Probably in the five. It's probably in the five section somewhere. Uh, I know Tiny Epic Galaxies is still my, my number one game. Uh, I like Tiny Epic Tactics as well. Uh, so this this has to be between three and five somewhere for me with Tiny Epic Games. So for for a quick note, that's what I thought about the game, Shogunstein. All right, we, I think we got time for a few more here. Let's see. Little Will again. Little Will! Good to see you here on the board. <laughs> So a Friday night filler for a paper apps dungeon. No, this isn't a phone app. You should go check that Friday night filler out. Uh, it's very interesting. It was a Kickstarter game I found where somebody, I don't know, maybe I'll be corrected on this, but somebody wrote an algorithm to randomly create dungeons. And he had them printed on little spiral notebooks like, like you would keep in your vest pocket kind of notebook. And it's like 46 levels in each one. And every one, every single one is, is designed uniquely by the algorithm. So I ran that. I ran a few, a few games of that that night. And I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was great for what it was. What it was meant to be, it fills that niche perfectly. Literally a, a, a pocket notebook that as long as you have a six-sided die on you or a phone that you can generate a random number between one and six... Uh, and a little pencil, pen, uh, something to mark off where you're moving through the dungeon, then you then you have a game that will keep you occupied for 15, 20 minutes. You got a game that even if, if only five minutes goes by and, and, and whatever you're waiting for, all of a sudden now it's ready and you got to stop playing, you can pick it up later. You can pick it up later. It's really fun. So uh, little, little Will said, I actually love this. I would buy a bunch for friends for sure. You're not alone. I saw a lot of comments in the Kickstarter uh, page for this. I pretty much said the same thing. There were a lot of people that, after the fact, came back and said that they were interested in getting more copies because they want to give these out as gifts. And I can't argue with that logic. 
Uh, if there's still, uh, maybe I should do it right now, uh, give myself a little buffer time. But uh, in a few months when I'm thinking about uh, Christmas and holiday gifts for my friends and family, the gamer ones, I want to see if I can get some of these. Because you're right. You're right, Lil Will. These are perfect. I think I said it on the video, too. Uh, so we are right. <laughs> these are perfect little filler games that you can give out. They're all going to be unique. Each is going to be different. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> And uh, back to Spencer Palmer. <laughs> How you doing, Spencer? All right, so Midday Monday Monologue May comments. Going back to the May comments there. We have Spencer saying, I've always appreciated your openness and honesty. I hope nobody will hold that ad thing against you. I certainly won't keep up the great work. So I had been, uh, for, for a few months prior to this is, this is like three at this point now, it's been a month ago. <laughs> uh, but for about two months or so prior to that, I had been advertising that, uh, YouTube is, is, is commercial free because I'm not a monetized station channel. I'm not, uh, I have enough subscribers. I don't have enough, uh, annual view time to do that. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't on my mind, right? I'm not monetized. I don't care. In fact, I actually like that. Now, I'm not monetized, being able to say and do what I want and not worry about whether they're going to cut my monetization. Oh, I can't really say or do what I want because they might not like it or somebody might not like it and I lose my money. I don't got to worry about that crap. <laughs> not at all. Oh, which I think, and I will argue, keeps me a little bit more honest than everyone else here on YouTube. But uh, thank you for, for agreeing with that. You know, it's one thing to think something about yourself, but when you hear someone else say that also, say that they, they think, they find, they enjoy that you're being honest, that you are being upfront and they appreciate you for it, that means a lot. And that's why it bothered me when I found out that there were advertisements on my channel. I didn't do it. I'm not making money off it. I'm not monetized. I'm not getting a check. What would it be like? 12 cents? But that's not the point. So then I went back to an old email from YouTube, which I usually ignore since I'm not monetized. I don't care about that. I don't have any sponsors. I don't have anything. And I really don't care about seeing my, my monthlies. Because I'm not chasing an algorithm. I'm just doing what I like. <laughs> Which is a great feeling. So when I found that they were advertising on my channel, I got pissed. And I found this email that said, yeah, basically what YouTube is going to be doing from now on is if you are not monetized or cannot be monetized yet, but you have videos that are making X amount of time, X amount of views, that they're going to monetize it and they're going to take money from it. So I apologized. And that's, that's what Spencer's talking about there. And I am, I'm still pissed about this. It meant a lot to me. It still does. And I'm still not aiming to be monetized. I don't care if I get enough time and you're going to hold me accountable to this. I don't care if I get double, triple, quadruple the amount of time that I need uh, annually in order to start making money with this, I'm still not going to hit that monetize button. I'm not. Because I refuse to live with the fear that, oh, they may demonetize me. Then what am I going to do? Because that would mean I'm not having fun. And that's the only reason we're here. Right? <laughs> that's why your support means so much to me, that you are supportive of this concept that I'm doing can anyone someone on YouTube just do YouTube to do YouTube just because they're having fun or is money playing a part in it if money's playing a part in it at all then that that cuts into your fun you may still be doing it for fun but it's kind of into that because if you've ever once not done something, not said something, not aired something because you were worried that the money would get cut off. No matter how much fun you do, you are having doing this, you're not doing it for fun. And that's fine. 
If that's what you want, that's fine. I'm not here to, to judge you and cast stones at you. That's what you want. So that, that, uh, I was about to say something that is usually said completely sarcastically, though I, I have no desire or mean for it to be sarcastic, but that is good for you. I'm happy for you. I truly am. That's not my path. That's not my goal. Maybe there'll be another channel one day, a different channel, a not Two Gun Pixie channel that I'll do and I'll try to monetize, but not this one. This is my baby. No sponsors are going to tell me what to do, and no demonetization threat is going to tell me what to do. Thank you very much, Spencer. Thank you for seeing this, understanding this. I think a lot, maybe most of my viewers do understand that. All right, so I think that uh, 30 plus, 35, 36 plus minutes counting, uh, maybe 38 minutes counting the intro. I think this video is long enough. Yeah. Figure out where to snip out some of the slow parts. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Keep the comments coming. Remember, feel free to ask me anything. I want to, I want to be here and be helpful for you. If there's something you want to know, something you want to ask me about gaming, about personal sandwiches, or why I keep my hair the way I do, I, I don't know. That's why it's called an AMA. Ask me anything. All right, thank you very much for joining me here, everyone. I'm your buddy, Big John, at G for Two Gun Pixel Present.